Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Coinciding with the um, hardcore. No different than me. Got shot down. No different than me. Evaded capture. You guys wouldn't have evaded capture. You would have got caught. But anyway, he evaded capture. No different than you. War hero. No different than you. Can't pick up the phone. No different than you. Stuttered when he uh, used the templates. No different than you. Procrastinated. No different than you are going to do. And some of you have already procrastinated. How is that possible? And he quotes the Persian War and the this and the that in his email. And he's trying to say that Genghis Khan and the this and the that were no different than him. But, but I can't believe that. I just don't believe that. I got a feeling uh, Genghis Khan at all. Attila, the Hun, and the boys were probably closer to my personality, I think. I have no way of you know, substantiating that, proving that. And remember, he who writes the history of an MMA guys that you know the names of, cunts. I've had professional boxers you may or may not know the names of. Cunts. I've had gangland gangsters. Cunts. Just like you. How's that possible? Well, it is. I'm telling you, I've been doing this 30 years now. In the beginning, when the uh, Medina guys came here, from South America, what the fuck are they doing here? I mean, how could they pop? I mean, in fact, you just stick a gun on the guy's mouth, take his money. And I'm not telling you this so you feel good. That's the least of my, at least of my uh, worries, because if you leave here feeling good, something, I didn't do something right. But, but no, no matter what your personality or disposition, uh, you're not alpha males, but uh, whatever the degree of beta males you are, everybody reacts the same. Almost everybody. Not 100% everybody, but almost everybody. Some, like in the boxing analogy, some get up quicker than you might have gotten up. Some might have been more aggressive when they got up. But everybody's the same in that regard. Because that is not, those were not your role models. Those were not your benchmarks. Those were not your uh, uh, KPIs, if you will. Those were not your hurdle points. Because that's not how you were trained. And, uh, but I, I just read it. Uh, and he, he did his first deal. Long time. Took him a long fucking time. Took him a long fucking time. So um, we do the goals now on Friday, last morning because when you used to do them before last night because you drink too much and the goals were more or less not everybody but I mean a lot of the guys and gals less gals than guys uh, they weren't as coherent as they might be. <clears throat> So now in the morning, and then you work on at lunch, and then we, we talk about them after lunch. Uh, the, uh, and the best goal, and I've been doing this 30 years now um, for the kids, the best goal, completion, implementation, execution, uh, based on affirmations I've ever seen is my own. When I'm running down Torrance Boulevard in, uh, well, Anyway, um, so uh, on April of 1983, about 
you know, 40 years ago. Uh, after reading the Rob Report, I all recommend you read the Rob Report. I get no. We used to give you the Rob Report. We used to, well, we gave you Rolex watch. We did. I've tried everything. Nothing works. They're all only temporary fixes. As soon as your heart on goes down, you forgot about it. Um, reading the Rob Report. And in 1993, the year that I started the seminars, towards the end of the 93, uh, Rob Report voted me and two others the uh, executive coaches of the future. A girl, I know why she got voted. I mean, absolutely stunning. She was like uh, Miss Rudder Up or some shit and missed something or other. Uh, and a guy who had made quite a bit of money who lived on his boat uh, and he never came closer than two miles to any country because he didn't want to pay taxes. And he gave us some sort of three day course in me. Those two have long gone. Just like the newspaper article about Hispanic wealth, those guys are long gone, and I was the only, I'm the only one left. So I read the Rob Report, and as I'm reading the Rob Report, in the back page, now they have four or five Rob Reports, one about cars, one about this, one about that. As I get to the back page, it says, Island, Castle on Island for sale. And unlike you, you got to spreadsheet it. I had no money to speak of. I had already lost my first fortune by that time. No money. I said, well, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. So I finished my 20-mile run, uh, and I came back, and I told my uh, then wife, we're going to buy an island. Uh, uh, we're going to buy a castle on an island. But I thought of the James Bond kind of island. You know how in the James Bond movies, the helicopter comes in, and then there's a little fucking island in the castle? And uh, that's what I had in mind. As Sally would remind me from time to time, I am on an island. Sally is a supporter. This is not the kind of fucking island I had in mind. So um, the, um, then uh, I started looking at castles in uh, Thanksgiving in 1983 with my family. Nannies, we looked like the grapes of wrath. Uh, 82 suitcases, you know, kids throwing up, shit in their pants. And we came to the UK to look at uh, castles. This was the 19th estate that I looked at. I started looking in Northern Ireland. And they had just kidnapped um, somebody. And I asked my guide, why did they kidnap those people? Because he's rich. So I stopped looking in Northern Ireland. And then I went to England to look. And I saw a castle. I'm wondering, well, a moat. Well, if you buy a castle uh, with a moat, it automatic, it's leaking water. And normally, the basement and half of the first floor have got big problems. OK. Um, I bought a UK subsidiary from a large US company in a totally unrelated transaction on <coughs> New Year's Eve. The only, a guy named Jack McLaughlin, God rest his soul, called me up uh, about 8.30, a quarter to nine, New Year's Eve. Uh, and he says, Dan, I, I need a, a favor. I just said, yes. I didn't say what. And he said, uh, I need to sell this company. We can do it over fax machines. That's what you did in those days, fax machines. And uh, it's in the UK. It's called uh, Great Eastern Energy. Sounds good to me, Jack. He said, uh, so the papers went back and forth between our lawyers. Of course, our lawyers didn't like being bothered on New Year's Eve. The only person that's going to call, he's a bit, this was a billionaire guy, that used to let me use his G2 and G3 jet, because uh, I didn't have a plane at that time. And uh, yeah, you, you need a plane, you, you can use one of ours. And so um, we got all the paperwork signed. And I really didn't notice the assets and the liabilities or any of this shit. Okay. Um, but I got that call because I was not chilling, but being around billionaires. The only call you're going to get on New Year's Eve is your brother-in-law to bail, you out, bail him out being drunk or something like that. Okay. Now, then I visited the UK in spring of 84 and decided while in the UK, there was a huge opportunity for Great Western, the company that I founded. Uh, and I thought it was destiny because the company that I bought was Great Eastern. You know, you know, kind of stupid like you. I, I thought there was some sort of karma shit. Um, and, uh, and to go public, because the, the week I was there, a company called Petronol went public. Uh, and when you go public, 
in Europe, especially in uh, the UK, you have to post your financials in the newspaper the day before you go public. So all the financials were in the Financial Times and, and various newspapers, and this page and page and page. So I'm sitting at the Hilton uh, Bar, which I just went to a couple years ago to celebrate having been there. And uh, remember, the Hiltons allowed you to stay if you were a veteran, half price, share it in half price. And I was paying $89 for my room. And my room was not as big as this fucking platform. The only good news is I could have had a room with a bathroom down the hall, but I'm not the kind of guy that uses the bathroom down the hall. So I had a bathroom, if you could call it that. It looked like a prison. You know how when you look at prison cells, they got a toilet and a, I'm sure you know, a, a toilet and a, a thing in the, in the corner. That's what was my bathroom. And I had a shower. They had a kind of a, a screen around it, and so you have a thing that you go like this. Okay, so that was my room. So I'm standing, sitting in the bar, and I'm looking at the newspaper, and I look at the assets, liabilities, blah, blah. And I said, fuck, they're nothing. And they just had created a 50 million pound, at that time about a $200 million, because it was a four to one at that time, pound of the dollar, a $400 million company with nothing. Unlike you, I didn't spreadsheet it. I didn't think about it. I immediately saw who the professionals were, the lawyers, the accountants, blah, 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 the investment bank, et cetera, et cetera. I went to the investment banker and I said, uh, who are the best lawyers, the best accountants for this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because offshore exploration companies at that time were like crazy, just like artificial intelligence is now. Because Dryhold Dyke had founded the North Sea and saved Britain from bankruptcy. So all this came, you know, I, I figured this all out in about a half a millionth of a second. So I went to Freshfields, the best lawyers, were the Bank of England, the Queen of England, the Church of England, and Dan Penna. I went to E&Y, uh, who were the leading company at that time uh, in taking companies public. And I built up professionals all around it, unfortunately, on a delayed fee basis this time. Because the I had been there, remember, in 81 and I got stung for half a million pounds. Uh, and I signed them all up. And then I had to find something to take public. Okay. I went back to the US and found something to go public. So I had already stuck my neck out. And at that time, about the minimum was that you needed to have two million barrels of proved reserves. Proved, not producing. In other words, not oil and gas coming up but proved that had a uh, engineering report saying that the shit's there. Over the years, I found out the, these engineering reports are only about 50% accurate. So I believe we use Ryder Scott for our engineering. Uh, I went back and I uh, gave the guy on a $2 million purchase, I gave him $60,000. I took an option out for six months that I would come back and pay him $1,940,000 for this shit, these acres, in the uh, DJ Basin, which is in Wyoming. Now, he just thought this was 60 grand he was going to get. I was never going to be back. This is not the first option. And there's a whole layer of the oil business that all they do is sell morons from New York City, morons from London, morons from Amsterdam, options on their property, because they know they're never going to be able to fulfill the contract. He was wrong about me, because I actually did. I went public on my 39th birthday, August 10th, 1984. Uh, I made my final offer on this castle in August 84, and I moved in September 1, 84. 84. So I've been here 39 years. 39 years. Um, again, I've told you it's the worst investment, or the second worst investment I've ever made, this property, uh, because it sucks money. I just, I've spent, I don't even want to know. When they tell me what I can depreciate, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know how much money I've sunk in this, this hole. Um, but it was 17 months from the day that I, I'm going to buy a castle on an island until I moved in. Millions of permutations had to happen. Millions. Millions. Now, the two greatest, in addition to my quantum leap, acts of QLA quantum leap that I've ever seen in my life. One, when Mr. Obama, who I'm not a fan of, said that he was going to be the first black president 
when he was doing crack at Whittier College in Los Angeles, California. And the second was when President Kennedy, at his inaugural uh, address in 1960, said, we were going to put a man on the moon and return him safely. We had no NASA. We had no infrastructure. We couldn't even get a motherfucking chimpanzee off the ground. The military, Air Force and Army, etc., had conniptions. But in July 1969, I'm taking one small step for man and a giant step for mankind. And Guthrie Castle are the three greatest examples of quantum leap that I've seen in my career. Today, um, after this slide, I'm going to show you how to write goals and how to write affirmations. Now, I've replaced the castle goal. I have 23. I still I was seeing my affirmations last night. I have 23 affirmations, and the affirmations have changed over the years from when my little kids were little, and now I have grandkids, etc. I have three or four affirmations for the you meatheads. Uh, the, um, and, uh, although hope's not a uh, strategy, you know, I hope and pray that some of that gets through to you. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I'd be a liar if I didn't say I was disappointed every year. I'm disappointed every week. I'm disappointed every motherfucking day by you. There's not a fucking day that goes by that I'm not disappointed. And then once in a while, it's like the girl at the uh, Holy Family who came from the orphanage, uh, St. Teresa, and when she was six years old, they shipped her over to the Holy Family to grow her up, uh, and then she uh, went to university, got a job, and now she came back to the Holy Family with her little three-year-old kid. That was an 11-year process for a modicum of success. Bombarded by you every fucking day, failing. And I'm still here. Now, you're going to compile a list of everything you want. Not everything that you want a, a fucking new pair of shoes. I don't mean that. Okay? A substantive things, you know? A college education for your, uh, your mongoloid idiot, uh, nine-year-old kid, whatever it is, okay? Uh, a chateau uh, uh, in France, uh, you know, a, uh, a uh, ski chalet in uh, Zermatt. Uh, people have bought castles. My neighbors, some of my mentees, unfortunately. Uh, whatever it is, you're going to put a list together. You're going to convert my want list into a goal list. You're going to convert goals into affirmations, and you're going to begin each affirmation with the words, I am. You're going to add an emotion word to each affirmation. Write each affirmation in the present tense using the verb that ends in ing. We're going to show you some examples. You're going to say each affirmation out loud at least twice a day. We have some of the mentees that say their affirmations 10 times a day. The more you say the affirmations, the higher the probability they come to fruition more quickly. I only used to say my affirmations twice a day. When I got up in the morning, when, before I went to bed, now I only say my affirmations before I go to bed. If one of your wants is to increase your net worth fifth, five million every month, then you turn it into a goal by writing it down on your goal list as I want to increase my net worth five million every month or more. Now, we have people increasing their net worth 50 million a month. And they wish they had put 50 billion a month. See, your subconscious doesn't know you're full of shit. Affirmations have been used in athletics since the first Olympia 2,000 years ago. And visualization is important. You see yourself walking into, for example, my, uh, one of my goals was to have a 50,000 square foot office space in the oil center of the world. We had 48,000 square feet in Houston, two floors. When my, my goal was I saw myself walking through the elevators and onto Italian marble. You go to 1111 Bagdy today, 
even though I haven't been in those offices in many years, it's Italian marble. As you walk through the foyer, I visualize a big gold GW. You can go, well, big gold GW has been taken down and sold, but there used to be a gold GW. I visualized two receptionists that look like Miss Universe, like this. In 1984 to 1992, there was two receptionists that looked like this. I visualized walking down the halls of my direct reports in their big office. I know offices aren't in now, but offices were. I saw myself walking into my 2,000 square foot office. It was only 1,700 square feet. I, walk, I saw myself taking a jacuzzi in my office, and, the, and it all took place. It all fucking happened. And the affirmation would be, I am happily and easily increasing the amount of my net worth by five million or more each and every month. The phrase I am sends a command to your subconscious that doesn't know you're full of shit so that it can work on this goal for you even while you sleep. The term happily and easily tells your subconscious that you will not struggle to accomplish this. Remember, your uh, subconscious doesn't know any better. You may want to use a, another term that will help you experience the emotions. And you've got to think it. You've got to feel it. You've got to smell it. That painting to me, which is famous, it won a big award in 1986 of me and my dog there. I saw myself looking like that way before I had any money, way before. I saw myself looking like that before I even had the goal of the castle on the island. Uh, to the present tense word increasing creates a stress between you, what you are saying, and reality, so that your subconscious acts with a sense of urgency and makes it happen. The or more is important also because when you realize that how easy it is to increase your savings account, five million a month, each month, you may want to immediately raise the amount. These two little words will have already sent the message to your subconscious and you will reach that monthly amount quicker. The best times to say the affirmations are in the morning, when you get up, and in the evening just before you go to bed. There's all kinds of alpha ray reasons that, that I don't go into. Commanding your subconscious to work on them while you sleep. By saying them uh, in the morning, you give your subconscious the opportunity to present a report of what you did while you slept. The increased focus you experience as a result of this uh, simple activity will produce phenomenal result, results so that you truly get what you want out of life. This is your homework. You're going to do it at lunch. Every single member of the Hall of Fame followed this process. There's not one person that didn't. And we, had, we have people rep increasing their net worth at 50 million a month. A month. Uh, John Elway, the famous quarterback from decades ago, who now owns about half of uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, had an affirmation to go when he started when he was about five or six years old. He was going to win a Super Bowl in overtime. For those of you that know anything about football history, uh, it just said in overtime. His third Super Bowl. Not his first, not his second. He won in overtime. I have kids on the wall. He was an all-state baseball player. They played AAA baseball, which is the highest high school baseball you can play. Their goal uh, when he was a uh, freshman uh, for the team, and because they were all pretty young, they were all freshmen and sophomores, and the coach was to go to the state uh, finals and win the AAA state baseball championship. Go to the finals. They went to the finals in his sophomore year, and they lost two to one. The coach changed the goal, not to go to the finals, but to win the finals. They went in his junior year, and they went one five to three. I've had Olympians in this room, not this room, but the next room, that said that they had a goal since they're five, six, seven years old to be an Olympian. Well, they went to the Olympics, and they won dick. They went cock. I've met the uh, uh, Olympic weight, uh, Russian Olympic weightlifting coach, powerlifting guy, uh, who looks like a big tub of shit, 
but uh, they don't take you on the team unless your goal is to win gold. They don't, nobody remembers second place. It's harder to create generational wealth than it is to win a gold medal at the Olympics. When I say that there are about 0.00008 out of the 8 billion people on the earth, that means about 8, about 800,000 people are capable of doing generational wealth out of the 8 billion from scratch. Now, I've been saying this since we only had 5.5 billion people. But it's harder to get generational wealth than it is to win an Olympic gold medal. Bye-bye, YouTube.